Hi, yogis. So our practice today will be uh, fairly heat inducing. So we may build a, a little bit of sweat, maybe a faster pace of breath. As always, you can take your time with your practice if you need to slow it down at any time, come down to a more restful position, um, maybe do less work or adding in more work as you need. Again, it's always about your own practice. So for your, um, for your practice, you will maybe want to block and that should be the only additional prop that we need. Of course, go ahead and grab a strap or a blanket or any other props that you like to use for your practice. And we'll begin either in seated or lying down. So just find a comfortable position. Again, you can either be seated or lying down. Um, just to make sure that we remain alert and awake throughout our opening meditation, awake and aware. And if you're comfortable doing so, you can go ahead and close your eyes. And remember that it's perfectly okay to sit with your eyes open as well. We just want to sort of soften the gaze a bit and find what works for you. So we'll start by tuning into the posture as your body is in whatever position it is right now. It might be more noticeable if you're in a seated position. So if you decide and you were lying down for your practice and you'd like to come to seated, go ahead and do that here. And just again, let's just take notice of where our spinal column is, noticing how it feels how it's sitting in your body right now. And notice if there's any minor adjustments that you can make. It's helpful to keep the spine straight, which is more energizing for your body. So you keep the spine nice and straight and then relaxing the muscles all around the skeleton. We'll use the breath to aid in this process. Let's breathe in, breathing in energy and awareness into the spine. Reaching the spine gently upward. As you exhale, letting go maybe through the shoulders, let there be some slack in the jaw and soften the belly. So let's take a few rounds of breath in the same way, just becoming more aware of each of these sensations within the body. So as you inhale, we find the length through the spine, which continues all the way up through the neck and in the crown of the head. Energizing the spine. And then as you exhale, we just softly let go of this, the shoulders moving away from the ears, softening through the jawline, maybe relaxing the eyes if they're closed or if they're open. Think inhale, being energizing. Exhale, relaxing, maybe softening the hips deeper into the surface that you're sitting on or even lying on. As we continue to breathe in this manner, see where in the body that you can feel the breath. It might be in the stomach or abdomen as you feel the rise and fall of the breath. It could be more in the chest with the expansion and contraction of the rib cage, perhaps in the nostrils or even the mouth where you can feel the sensation of temperature, and just maybe the smooth and smoothness of the breath as it, as it moves in, maybe tickling the end of the nose. So for this meditation practice, let's just pick perhaps one space, whether that be um, up in the head 
space, chest space, or abdomen. Notice where you most feel and connect with your breath. So as you feel the body breathing, try to stay with the breath all the way through from the beginning of an inhale, all the way through to the end of the exhale. Be with the breath. Without forcing the attention, perhaps see if we can rather just rest it gently on the sensations of the body breathing. When thoughts arise, we don't need to push them away or resist. We can notice them, leave them be, return to the experience of the body and breath. Let's use a counting exercise to help with this process. So the, with breathing, we can add just a, a simple count of maybe one through eight. So as you inhale and then exhale, count one in your head. Again, we'll inhale and exhale, count two. And continue on all the way up to eight. And then as you get to eight, let's start back at one. We'll use this counting as a tool to help us build concentration. We we'll use it as a tool, not as a measurement. So we don't, by, if you're able to get all the way up to eight, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are, it is a measure of how good of a meditator you are. And when you, your mind wanders or you start thinking of something else, go ahead and come back to one and start again. You may notice your mind wandering. When the mind wanders, it offers us an opportunity to cultivate mindfulness and concentration. Each time we notice the mind wandering, we're strengthening our ability to recognize our experience. Each time we bring the mind back to the breath, we strengthen the ability to focus on one thing, on one object. So go ahead and complete maybe a round or two of breath. And our practice, our physical practice will begin lying down on our back. So if you are there, you may remain there, and if you are seated, go ahead and roll down onto your back. You may keep your eyes closed here if you choose. And go ahead and draw your knees into your chest. Let's go ahead and release the left leg. 
Extend the right foot up into the air. We'll take hold behind the hamstring. Let's flex the foot. Allow for as much of a bend in your right knee as you need. Maybe draw the leg in a little bit closer if you have the space. And then release the leg and we'll switch it out. Go ahead and bring left leg in, slight bend in the knee, grapple behind the hamstring. Flex the foot and draw the toes closer towards the face. And we'll release the left leg as well. Walk the heels in close to the glutes. Toes, all 10 toes pointing forward, flowing bridge. We lift the hips up, reach the arms overhead. And then as you exhale, gently lowering hips back down to the mat as we bring our arms down to our sides. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. Maybe the hips down, go ahead and bring your hands underneath of the shoulders as if you were gonna move into wheel pose. So we're placing the hands um, under or close to the shoulders, elbows pointing upwards. So kind of squeeze the elbows inward towards one another. I'm not gonna lift up into wheel, but keep your feet as they are. Let's lift up into bridge and hold here. Pressing down into all four corners of the feet. And then softly setting the hips back down on the mat. Let's take hands behind the head, so palms towards the back of the head. You don't necessarily need to interlace the fingers. Let's keep some pressure off of the neck. We're gonna crunch and lift. Maybe lift the shoulder blades off of the mat and then exhale to lower. Let's do maybe, I don't know, 10 to 15 here, whatever feels good for you. Just beginning to warm up the core and into the abdomen. See if you can keep some space between the chin and the chest. So just notice if you're really pulling on the back of the head and drawing elbows inward. Keep the elbows open lifting chin upward towards the sky. Always remembering to keep breathing. And then we'll lower back down. This time we're gonna add in a bicycle, bicycle crunch, simple, bringing left knee towards the right elbow, turn the torso towards the left side, and then we'll switch to the opposite side. Gently drawing elbow towards the knee. As a reminder, we are bringing it towards, doesn't have to touch. If you bring the elbow to touch the knee, doesn't mean you're better at crunching than anybody else. Always making this your own practice. Let go of your comparisons and judgment, whether that be of yourself, somebody else, or maybe even of a previous practice. So we're gonna even out the body. I started with the right elbow towards the left knee. So I'm gonna add, and on the opposite side, lowering down, bring the hands behind the hamstrings. Let's get a couple of rock and rolls back and forward. And we'll come up to a butterfly pose. 
feet together, knees relaxed gently outward. If you would like to fold forward here, you can. As a reminder, again, in our butterfly pose, we don't necessarily need to sandwich the feet together. Just let them naturally fall outward as they do. And then we'll lift the torso into boat pose, lift the legs, hands behind the hamstrings. Slowly go ahead and lower the feet down to the mat. Let's reach the arms forward. On the exhale, lean back. As you inhale, reach forward. Exhale, lean back. See if you can maintain as much length in the spine as you can. As if you begin to compromise your form or get too much rounding into the spine, maybe don't lean back quite as far. If it's helpful, you can also have a block between your hands as you lean back. Maybe something to help focus on. Stay with the breath. Next time we come forward, take the block in your left hand and lift the right leg. Reach left hand towards the right foot. And then we're gonna turn to an open twist, set the right foot down. Lift the right foot, block towards the foot, open twist left. Lift and twist. Two more. Let's switch, bringing block to the right hand, lift the left leg, set it down, twist right, lift, twist. Bring the block forward, lift the feet off of the ground. If you need to release the block and bring the hands behind the hamstrings, go ahead and do that here too. We're gonna go ahead and release the legs down, set the block down. Let's roll over the tops of our feet back to a tabletop position. Let's take a couple rounds of cat and cow. And then tucking the toes under, downward facing dog. Our first down dog, maybe a couple of heel pedals and hip shifts. On your next inhale breath, let's take a right leg high. And then step through to the top of the mat. Setting the back heel down, warrior one. On the exhale, step up to forward fold. Half lift. Exhale, chair. Back to half lift, breathe in. Exhale and fold forward. Let's step back to plank, end of vinyasa. On the inhale breath, let's take the left leg high. Step through to lunge. Setting your back heel down, warrior one. Step up to forward, fold, exhale. Half lift. Chair. Half lift. Forward fold. Vinyasa. Yes. 
Right leg high, inhale. Step through to lunge. Warrior one. Forward fold. Half lift. Chair. Half lift. Forward fold. Vinyasa. Left leg high. Step through to lunge. Warrior one. Forward fold. Half lift. Chair. Half lift. Fold forward. Vinyasa. Let's go ahead and rest in child's pose. Any restful position. If you need another vinyasa or two to continue building heat, go ahead and add that in here too. So this will be the end of the quick flow, about 20 minutes. Feel free to move into your stretching and shavasana here. If you're moving on to the 40, 45 minute practice, Take another breath or two in either seated or child's pose and we'll meet in a downward facing dog. You can have your block towards the top of your mat. So we're gonna add in some kind of jumping kind of motions in our practice. If that is not comfortable for you, stepping is your option here. So we're gonna bend into the knees, gaze forward, either step or hop to the top of your mat. Lift up into chair pose. On the exhale, fold forward. Place the hands on the mat. Either step or hop back to plank or kneeling plank. We're either going to step or hop forward into forward fold. And chair pose. Let's lift the left leg, one-legged Tadasana. Find leg through the spine, press down into your supporting leg. Step the left leg back into lunge with airplane arms. Chest is leaning forward. Think long line of energy from crown of your head all the way down to your left heel. Let's take one-legged Tadasana, lift the left leg. We're gonna to step to the back of the mat, turn to face left, side lunge, prayer hands. If you wanna take this lower, lower into a yogi lunge, you can do that as well. Curtsy lunge, we're gonna step the left leg back behind the right, take a prayer twist, left elbow to the right thigh. Stepping out wide again, horse pose, cactus arms. Breath in, as you exhale, let's lift our right knee towards the right elbow. Back to horse, left elbow towards the left knee. So we're making like this side body crunch. Back to horse. On your exhale breath, let's turn to face forward, warrior three airplane arms. Left leg is extending back. Sweep the left leg through, one-legged Tadasana. Try out extending the leg. 
pressing through the heel, cross the left leg over, figure four. On your next exhale breath, we're gonna uncross the left leg, send it back, bring your left hand down to the floor or a block, revolve triangle, reach the right arm up towards the sky. We're gonna step the left leg to the back of the mat and step all the way back to downward facing dog. On your next exhale breath, hover the knees. We're in a tabletop, knees hover. We're gonna kick the left leg through to the right. We're gonna rotate to face our right side. Draw your right elbow back. Come back to your tabletop hover, kicking your right leg through to the left. Draw your left elbow back. Back to tabletop hover. Go ahead and set it down. Maybe move back to child's pose where you can finish through a vinyasa here. So remember, we start with the hop or step forward. Your choice. If you're hopping, you bend to the knees, gaze forward, hop or Step to the top of the mat, chair pose. On your exhale, fold forward and either hop or step back to plank. Holding your plank for just a moment, hop or step forward, chair pose. Let's lift the right leg, one legged Tadasana. Stepping the right leg back, lunge, airplane arm, Chair, chest is leaning forward. Back to one legged Tadasana. Bring the right leg through, lift it up. And then we're gonna step the right leg to the back of the mat, turn to face right for a side lunge, prayer hands. Again, if you wanna take it lower into a yogi lunge, you can. And then we're gonna step the right leg behind the left in a curtsy lunge, prayer twist, right elbow outside of the left thigh. Let's step it wide, horse pose, cactus arms facing right. Breath in on your exhale, let's bring right elbow towards the right knee. Step back to horse, setting down as gently as you can. Opposite side, left elbow towards left knee. Back to horse. Warrior three. We're going to turn to face forward. Let's take airplane arms. We're going to swing the right leg through one legged Tadasana. Again, if you want to try that option of extended leg rather than bent leg here, try it out. Bent leg is here, extended here. Anywhere in between, if your leg is down here, all good. Let's bring the right leg in, figure four. Cross it over, sit back into the hips. Building some heat. Continue to breathe. From your figure four, revolved half moon. We're gonna send the right leg back. Right hand comes down to the floor or block. Left arm extends up. Step the right leg back, downward facing dog. Tabletop, hover the knees. We're gonna kick 
the right leg through to the left, drawing left elbow back, tabletop hover. Opposite side, we're gonna kick left leg through to the right, draw the right elbow back. Tabletop hover, setting it down in tabletop, maybe moving through a vinyasa here. You can also take rest in child's pose or downward facing dog. So again, in your practice, if you feel like you have had plenty of work, go ahead and stay right where you are. Any restful position is great. If you'd like just a bit more work for your practice, we'll flow through that one more time with the breath. Bending into the knees, step or hop to the top of the mat, forward fold, chair. On the exhale, fold forward, step or hop back to plank. Step or hop forward into forward fold. Chair. One legged Tadasana will lift the left knee. On your exhale, step back to lunge, airplane arms. One legged Tadasana, lift the left leg again. And we'll step out wide to face your left side, horse with cactus arms. Take a breath in. Exhale, elbow to knee. Horse, elbow to knee. Horse. Warrior three, turn to face forward. Left legs extend back, airplane arms. Swing the left leg through, one leg at Tadasana, leg extended or bent. Cross the left leg over, figure four. Revolved half moon, we're gonna send left leg back, left hand to the floor, right arm reaches up. Step back to downward facing dog. Tabletop hover the knees, we're gonna kick through to each side, doesn't matter what you start with. You choose, kick through, tabletop hover, kick through, tabletop hover, Vinyasa, child's pose, down dog. From your downward facing dog, step or hop to the top of your mat, forward fold, chair, fold forward. Step or hop back to plank. Step or hop to the top of the mat. Chair pose. One legged Tadasana, lift the right knee. Step back to lunge, airplane arms. One legged Tadasana, right leg lifts. Step to the back of the mat. So we turn to face right. Horse, cactus arms. On the exhale, elbow to knee. Horse. Exhale, elbow to knee. Horse. Warrior three, face forward. We're gonna swing the right leg through, one legged Tadasana. Crossing. Right leg over, figure four. Revolved half moon, send the right leg back, right hand to the floor, left arm reaches up. Step back, downward facing dog. Hover the knees, kick through. Tabletop hover, kick through. Tabletop hover, vinyasa, child's pose, downward dog. Let's find a restful position 
to slow down. Let's slow down the pace of the breath. When you feel ready, let's move down onto our belly. You can set your block off to the side. We'll just use that at the end of practice. As we come down onto our belly, we're gonna take cactus arms, lift up into locus. Let's lift the legs, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale to lower down, lift. And lower. Let's do that a few more times. Follow your breath. Squeeze everything as you lift up. When you lower down, go ahead and rest one arm over the other. And you can just rest with your forehead to the hands. We're gonna lift into the locust again with the option for your hands either be to reach fingertips back. You could also take chest expansion and Interlace fingers, press knuckles towards the heels. So chest expansion, lift, lift the legs or reaching fingertips towards the heels. Keep breathing here. Let's lower it all down and press back to child's pose. From your child's pose, let's come to a seated position. <clears throat> As we come to seated, we're gonna go ahead and um, keep the left heel tucked in towards the right glute, and then step your right foot over. Twist to your right. You unwind from your twist, cow's face pose. So we're just gonna tuck both heels in towards the body and your knees may or may not line up here. Mine don't, they're kind of out to either side. So tuck the heels in, this is a hip opening position. Let's do the same with the arms, cow's face pose. We're gonna do this without a strap today. If you have the bind, great. And if not, that's okay too. So we're gonna take the right arm reaches up, fingertips towards the back of the neck or upper back area. And then we're gonna take left fingertips and walk them up the back as well. And I'll just turn around so you can see what that looks like. Keep the head lifted. And then we'll release the arms. 
Go ahead and unwind the legs. We're gonna tuck the right heel in towards the left glute. Step the left foot over, and then we'll twist to our left. And then unwind, keep the legs as they are, just tuck the heels in a little closer. So we're gonna bring the left heel in closer towards the right hip. Cow's face pose with the legs, add the arms, reach your left fingers up towards the sky and then drop them down to the upper middle back. And then walk your right fingertips up the middle of the back as well. Again, if you have the bind, Awesome, if you have your strap and you wanna add that in your practice here, go ahead. And if we have no accessories, you don't need them. We can just use our own body as a tool to open up our shoulders and, and hips here in this practice. Let's go ahead and release the hands. Go ahead and unwind the legs. Let's roll onto the back. Draw the knees in towards the chest and give yourself a little hug. If you want to hug into a little ball here and wrap arms around the shins, tuck forehead in towards the knees, you can do that too. Release the legs, let them fall out into a reclined butterfly pose, feet together, knees relaxed outward any position for your arms that feels good. Maybe out to the side, this can also be opening through the chest and shoulders. So often throughout our day, we are hunched forward with our arms in front of us, looking at our phone or whatever it is. So it's good to open this front side of the body as much as we can. Feel free to close your eyes here. If you feel great here and you want to end your practice in this position, you, you can stay right here. A couple of options, restorative positions. You can, of course, always move to Shavasana, extending out whenever you're ready. My suggestions for this practice, or at least for maybe 10 rounds of breath, is either to stay in butterfly, restorative bridge, so the block comes underneath of the hips, supports. Feet can stay on the floor. You can also extend the legs out here. Be mindful of your low back, but this can be a great stretch and opening through the groin and hip flexors. And as I mentioned before, we are quite tight through the chest and shoulder area, restorative fish. We lay over, our shoulder blades go <clears throat> over top of the block Make sure that your head is able to come down to the floor if it doesn't add a blanket or something supportive so that your head isn't just hanging in space. You want it to come down into contact with something. And then arms can relax out to the sides. Make adjustments to the block because you want to feel comfortable for the most part here if you're super tight in the chest and shoulders. Sometimes it can feel maybe slightly uncomfortable if if we don't often take the time to stretch this area. So this is your Shavasana. Position of choice today to finish our practice.
And so we begin to awaken from our Shavasana. So if you're being supported by a block, you can just take some gentle movement to begin to get off of the block. Maybe adding deeper breath. Do we need more time for Shavasana today? And take as much time as you need. If you're coming back to a seated position, take your time to make your way there. We'll close our practice with a united breath in. Let it go. Namaste.